What's up? It's your boy, Network. I tell y'all, y'all shouldn't have gave me this app, man. It's a boy, Network, bruh. Hashtag lab every day. Shout out to your boy, DeWan. This is section 1.3C, Charlie, TTL, which stands for Time to Live. It's a subsection of sec- of 1.3, describe IP operations of the CCMP route exam. We're going to go over a couple PowerPoints, basically talk about what the time to live is. And then I'm going to show y'all an example and packet tracer on how that works. Let's go ahead and go over to today's topics. Well, that's just that's today's topic, but I'm going to go over it in the exam topics. Again, this is for the CCMP route exam version two. And we are at section 1.3C Charlie, TTL, time to live, which is a subsection of describe IP operations. After that, we're going to move on to section 1.4, explain TCP operations and do the uh, subsection IPv4 and IPv6 path MTU discovery. Today, we're going to do time to live, TTL, time to live. Um, I think that's a movie too. I can't remember. I don't even know, but we're not going to do a movie review and I'm not going to show you a movie called Time to Live. Uh, this is about the IP operation, Time to Live. And Time to Live is a uh, method that's used to stop loops from happening at the layer three level. Remember now, spanning tree is a method that's used to stop loops from happening at layer two, right? So, give y'all another Wikipedia definition. Time to live is an 8-bit field that's in the IP header. Remember remember the uh, fields we went over in the IP header? This guy right here? It's 20 bytes right here, right? Well, 8 bits of that 20 bytes represents the time to live. And that's what we're going to go over. TTL, time to live, right? So, it's an 8-bit field that's in the IP header that's decremented by 1 by each router it passes through. As you see at the bottom, each router, each hop. It passes through. It's, de- it's subtracted by one. Once the time to live reaches zero, the packet is dropped and the ICMP time exceeded message may be generated by the router. And this feature is used to help break loops, like I said. So if we didn't have time to live and you sent a packet out in the network that's you know not destined for a specific network and it happens to loop, it would basically loop all day. So the same issue that spanning tree is designed to resolve you know, broadcast on, we'd have that on the internet on a grander scale, and that would be a catastrophe. So that's why they created Time to Live. Depending on what host you're trying to ping, the Time to Live gets decremented by one, but it depends on what what you're trying to reach. So as you can see right here on this slide, Windows, the time to live is 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 one to tw- is one twenty eight, right? So if you ping in a Windows host, you're going from one twenty eight down and subtract how many hops you went, and that'll tell you. It gets kind of confusing because if you on a Cisco device and you're trying to ping a Windows host, and you went from two fifty five, and it, all of a sudden it's like fifty four, and you know you ain't go like one hundred fifty something hops, then then you know there's a change in operating system. Let's say in a Linux core, so we ain't gonna you know go over that. Um, but I'm going to show y'all, you know, I'm going to kind of explain all that once we go over the example in Packet Tracer. Try to explain this real quick and let y'all move on to y'all studies. Because remember, I used to be the same way watching CBT Nuggets. And I see it say 30 minutes. I'm like, oh, God. This is a little uh, topology I created right here. We've got, as you can see, we've got about seven routers right here. We got a laptop on one end. You see my, so yeah, we got a laptop on one end. On the right hand, we got a server at the other end of the network. All of them are different networks, right? And, and I've I've configured OSPF on all these routers. So I could have just, you know, had it all on one flat network, but I didn't want to do all that. I just want to kind of make it, you know, a little bit more complex. So let's go ahead and start off. As you see on the left-hand side, we got the laptop. We're going to be working from this guy right here. Uh, let's go ahead and start off by pinging router three, right? So the laptop is going to be pinging router three. Now, as we're doing this, keep in mind now, the time to live changes with every router you pass. So if you got some layer two devices or firewall or something like that, that's not layer three, then that's not really considered a hop. So in this example, as you can see on the left-hand side, we got a switch there, then we get into the router, then we move on into the network, right? So go ahead and pause this video and think about how many hops it would take before it gets to uh, router three. All right, hopefully y'all pause it and uh, I'm going to go ahead and show y'all what happens when we ping router three. I don't want to make it too confusing. I was, you know, as I was testing this, I was going to check. Well, actually, we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. So right now we're going to fast forward and get to the switch, right? Now we had the switch. What you think the time to live is going to be? Let's go ahead and check. We'll open up the uh, 
packet right here and let's look at the outbound PDU this is the IP header that we was looking at right this is a representation of that every time you send a packet in the network this 20 bit uh, 20 byte header is what goes along with your packet as you see right here the time to live didn't change why because we pass we we uh we're actually on a switch and a switch is a it's not obviously it's not a router it's not a layer 3 device so that's not considered a hop right let's go ahead and move on to router 1 and see what happens fast forward now we are router 1 minimize that bad boy let's take a look at router 1 i mean the packet at router 1 right now we're still at 255 right that's the time to live it's at 255 so I'm going to go ahead and just let y'all think about what it's going to be when we get to router 3. We're going to go over to router 3 and head right back. Go ahead and pause this video and think about it. All right, we're back. I ain't giving y'all that much time. You should have hit pause. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and fast forward. Fast forward to router 3. And come right back. Normally, you'd be at the switch, so you're not too worried about what the time to live is once it gets there. Once it gets there, you want to know how many hops it would take to get to router three or how many hops it would take once it comes back right so let's go ahead and open up that packet and take a look and this is our header 253 is our time to live y'all see that that's what the time to live value is 253 why remember the switch is not a hop right so we went from laptop to router three let's go ahead and do that you're not going to count the, your default gateway because that's not considered a hop yet you going from there that point on that's how many hops you count so let's go see if you look at the topology, that's not a hop. This 255. So again, 250. It's still 255 here. It's still 255 here. 254, 253. Once you're at route of three, and then you head back. That's why I told you, hey, it took our time to live is 253, right? I hope that makes sense. Let's go ahead and go to router six, and then we're gonna go to server one. So how many hops you think it would take to router six? Go ahead and pause this video. And think about that before we do that. I hope you hit pause. Let's go ahead and go to router six. I'm gonna delete this bad boy. Have laptop one ping router six and see how many hops that would take. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward and then head right back, right? We got router one, two, three, four, five, six, right? You heading back and keep going, heading back. Make sure I'm at the right. How many hops do you think that would be? Oh, how many, what you, what you think the time to live would be? Let's go ahead and open up the pack and find out. 250 is the time to live. Y'all see that? This is the IP header, right? 250 is the time to live. Why? Because that's how many hops it took. Once it got here, it was still 255. Got here, still 255, right? 254, 253, 252, 251, 250, right? Let's go ahead and ping server one and see how many hops they would take. Go ahead and pause this video, look at this topology and see how many hops it would take the server one. But before we do that, think about this slide right here. That server, I'm gonna tell y'all right now, is a Windows host, right? That's a Windows host. So these are the different time to lives you have, depending on what the host you, uh, you trying to, you trying to ping or you trying to reach. So if that's a Windows host, look at this topology and see how many hops, what your time to live would be. Go ahead and pause this video and think about that. All right, hopefully you paused it. And we'll have laptop one ping server one and take a look at that, right? And fast forward, event list. And we gonna fast forward all the way to the server. And then head right back. Remember, each router it passes through is the hops you count, except for that first one because the time to live you haven't hop you haven't passed the router yet, so that's why your your time to live don't change. Let's go ahead and open up that bad boy and see what our time to live is. That is the tricky part, right? It's kind of curveball I gave y'all. Look at the uh, PDU. This is our IP header that comes along with every packet. Our time to live is one twenty one. Why did that happen? Because a Windows host, you count from 128 down, right? That make any sense. So we went from 128 down, right? So from laptop, we went, I'll bring this up. 128 is still here. 128 is still here, right? And then 127, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22. Once we got there, 21. That's why our time to live is 121. You would think like, you know, when you first ping it, you going, that's like what? That's, that's seven hops? You doing 255 minus seven, right? It should be like what two, 
249 or 248 or something. But no, the reason why it changed is because that host is a Windows host. So, um, you know, go ahead and create, you know, something like this in Packet Tracer or ping different devices on your own network and see how see what happens when you when you, um, you know, that's the way to kind of see how the time to live value changes and see how it works. So if you like this video, go ahead and comment, like, subscribe, and uh, we're going to move on to the next topic. Thank you for watching the network.